The Wii was an early 2000s gaming machine. I mean, technically it really wasn't, but it literally took the world by storm. Your grandma had it, your weird neighbor had it. If you walked inside any household, chances are you would see this white box and a motion sensor on the TV. The Wii was a lot of things, okay? It, it was an amazing avatar creator. Uh, you could check the f forecast. But by far the thing that resonated with me the most was the accessibility and versatility of experiencing Nintendo's past. Today, I'm busting open the nostalgia vault and talking about a service that you may or may not know by its theme song. It brought a whole new way to experience retro gaming, and this service, this channel, this shop, not only enhanced and emphasized my love for retro gaming, but it gave so many others a gateway into the world of gaming's past. Some using it for nostalgic reasons, and others experiencing it for the very first time. So today, I'm just gonna be sitting down and talking about the Wii Shop channel. Welcome to Nostalgia Vault, the show where I reminisce and talk about shopping services. Today is a special episode on the show because today I'm gonna to be talking about a uh, specific era in my childhood, one that kind of takes up, I would say a big portion of the Nostalgia Vault, of my personal Nostalgia Vault. And so today we're gonna to open that up and talk about the Wii era. I remember getting my first Wii, well, my only Wii, uh, when I was, I think, around, I would say seven or eight. It was probably that age range. I was more, I'm leaning more towards seven, but I got it for a birthday or something, and I just remember buying it and it coming bundled with Wii Sports. I played a ton of Wii Sports, and it was just, ah, uh, it was so much fun, but the Wii games itself is for probably another episode down the line, but today we're going to be talking about more of, I guess, the utility aspect of the Wii. The gaming world was kind of shifting into like a modern uh, design with their consoles, uh, with them being more multi-purpose. Nintendo had to kind of shimmy its way in to that trend with the Wii and offer many different utilities and services on the Wii itself. I mean, you could check the forecast, you could... Uh, edit photos on the Wii, you could uh, search on the internet, there was all sorts of different things. But of course there was one channel that really resonated with me the most, it was the one that was just like my bread and butter, and really there was no contest to it. Of course my friends, it was the Check Me Out channel. The Wii Shop channel. This thing, this is probably the most iconic channel on the Wii, in my opinion. The Wii Shop channel is basically what the name implies, it is a shopping service. But of course, with Nintendo being the way they are, they made it more than just a typical shopping service. It was really charming in a lot of ways, and that's kind of what I want to dive into, at least in this section of the video, and really just talk about what made it so charming. So uh, let's dive in. If I'm gonna talk about the Wii Shop channel, I have to talk about the music, okay? The music was this really upbeat, uh, fun, just theme that would play repeatedly on the channel. And I don't really know why, but Nintendo had no right. They did not have to do it at all. They did not have to make this song so stinking catchy. Like this is, <laughs> it was so, catchy and it's still used today. So many people know about this this song and if you haven't heard it or heard about it, um, you, you, I don't, I don't believe you. I actually don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. Okay, I, I kind of hate to admit this, but I easily sank hours in just browsing the Wii Shop channel. Like, just browsing. Okay, I, I don't know what it was. Okay, actually I do know. Here's what I'll tell you. <laughs> With the Wii being just kind of how, I don't know, just so simplistic, uh, it was just so easy to just browse. You know, you had the Wii remote, you're just kind of clicking through different places and just kind of clicking on the different categories of games you could purchase and just whatever. It was so charming and I just loved the fact that you could just browse 
so easily. Now I think definitely one of my favorite things about the service is when you purchased an item and the game was downloading, Nintendo had a very fun and unique way of showing the progression of how much has been downloaded. I remember there was an 8-bit Mario that would run across the screen and when you got to certain checkpoints of how many or how much it's downloaded, he would like hit a coin block or you go you went and you would like he would just go and hit a block showing the progression of the download. But on the rare occasion, sometimes that Mario that would run across the screen was actually a, he had a fire flower, a fire flower power up. He had his fire flower, I guess, ability, and you could literally press the A button to shoot fireballs as you waited. I don't really know like the specifications or like the qualifications on how to make that happen or if you needed to purchase a certain amount or it was just a rare chance. I don't know, but it happened a few times for me and I just remember it was just so charming. Like you were just sitting there waiting for Star Fox 64 to download and you could just spam the A button and shoot fireballs. I don't know. It's just Nintendo just had a way of doing things and it was just it was just charming. And as a kid, I just loved that. I don't know. It was just it made the download process a lot more entertaining, that's for sure. <laughs> so in conclusion, Nintendo being the company that they are, just managed to make this uh, service just so fun and charming and just the act of even just browsing the games and the things that it offered was just fun. And I just loved that about it. And that's why I, I think all those combined, the, the music, the simplicity, the charming aspects of the progression, download progression screen was just, it was just fun to purchase items on there. It was fun to browse around. And that is why I easily sank hours browsing the Wii Shop channel. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But it wouldn't really be a quality service if the products provided on the shop weren't quality. And so Nintendo actually, in my opinion, kind of revolutionized the way of a digital download. This was kind of the era of gaming where digital download was starting to become a little more mainstream. The Xbox had Xbox Live Arcade, and I don't really know what the PlayStation had, but the Wii had Virtual Console. Virtual Console was basically the name of the emulation of past games. So Nintendo just offered a wide variety of legacy content through the Wii Shop. About, I would say about 80% of the shop was retro uh, legacy content, while the other 20% was like Wii, digital exclusive games, but most of it was a virtual console. This was back in the day when uh, companies and licensing wasn't really like the biggest issue. Companies didn't have to share developers or share IPs. And so the Wii had a wide range of games and honestly, an amazing selection of games to choose from. There were so many different games. There were so many different consoles. I mean, there was things I never even heard of. The TurboGrafx-16, uh, Neo Geo, uh, Sega Master System. Like these were games that I, or consoles that I never ever even heard of. And that doesn't even just go for the consoles. Like there were games that they're like, I were just completely just off my radar. I mean, one of my favorite things about the service was just the gateway of this brand new retro gaming world to me. I grew up playing the NES, I grew up playing the Super Nintendo and the N64 and all these different consoles, so I kind of already had my toes dipped into the retro gaming world, but this just widened my eyes, it widened my just world of retro gaming. And so there was games that I just had no idea even existed. I remember scrolling through the shop and seeing Contra 3. I didn't even know there was a Contra 2. And there was just so many different experiences that happened to where like it was just, it, I just, it blew my mind that there was a game that existed like that. And it was just so cool seeing the amount of variety in the consoles and games. But this wide range of games just really opened my eyes to new franchises, new IPs, new consoles. 
and I just remember there were so many instances where I just either purchased the game or experienced the game at my friend's house that I just never heard of. A prime example was actually Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars uh, that was on the Super Nintendo, and I remember my friend purchasing that, and I went over to his house, and I think he needed, like, a specific controller to play it because the Wii remote didn't have enough buttons to play it, but there was just, like, this this new, this brand new game. I never even knew Super Mario RPG existed. Like the only RPG game I know at the time that was Mario themed was Paper Mario. But I didn't even know at the time that Super Mario RPG was a prequel to Paper Mario. There was so many different uh, similarities and just so many different things. And that was just so intriguing to me. It was so cool seeing a retro Mario RPG. I, I, it was awesome. <laughs> Another game that my friend got was actually Golden Axe, and I don't remember the specific, I think it was the third one, but it was a medieval beat em up uh, co op game, and we just had a blast playing it. I think we almost beat it, but uh, I just remember I never ever heard of it, but yet I got to experience it for the first time, and it was just such an accessible way of doing it. The Wii Shop just made it so accessible to experience both popular and kind of more obscure retro gaming. And I, again, it was my bread and butter. I loved it so much. It was so cool. I enjoyed it so much, in fact, that I bought quite a few games on the service. And I really wish I had my original Wii with all the, uh, all the games on there, but unfortunately it broke. But uh, that's another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good chunk of games and uh, I I really don't I, ha I have a list uh, Let me just let me re review it real quick. <laughs> of course. I had to buy Mario 64 uh, This was probably this was the first time I experienced it completely on my own uh, I had a friend that had it and we played it every once in a while So I, I knew what it was, but I never got to experience the full game for myself and so I do remember getting it, beating it, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was, it was, it was just, it's special to me because that, again, that was the first time I got to experience Super Mario 64 fully all on my own. And again, the Wii Shop channel just made it so accessible to do that. I bought Mario Kart 64. Uh, I remember actually borrowing that game from a different friend and um, I, I played through the whole thing. I loved it. Um, and so I bought it on the virtual console and I played a lot of Mario Kart 64. It was an amazing game to me. I just, I don't know, I just loved, I loved Mario Kart in general. And so the more Mario Karts I had, the better, really. <laughs> I was also gifted uh, Super Mario Kart. Uh, and I, it was actually, I, like thinking about it, it's really cool that they even could do that back then. They could gift different games. And I remember a friend had a, uh, had enough Wii points to I think he bought Super Mario Kart and then he's like, hey, like we should experience it together or whatever. And he like bought it for me. I'm like, dude, that's so, it's like looking back, like as a kid, you didn't have a lot of money. Like I, at least I didn't. It was just so cool that my friend gifted me Super Mario Kart. So I had both Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario Kart. My Mario Kart library just grew because I had Virtual Console. It was amazing. I loved it. I remember I had Kirby 64. I actually had quite a few 64 games, uh, probably because the 64 was one of my main consoles I liked to play, and when I didn't have the physical cartridges, I would just buy them on the virtual console. And so, uh, yeah, but I bought Kirby 64. That was a really fun game. I remember playing it uh, quite a bit, and I don't know if I ever beat it, but I got pretty far. And I remember uh, one of my friends also played it, I think on emulator. And so I might have been introduced to it via emulator, but I bought it on the virtual console and I remember playing it a lot. And it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was, it was fun, fun experience. And then uh, I remember actually buying Contra 3. Like I didn't, like I said, I didn't even know there was a sequel to Contra. And so when I saw Contra 3, I was like, dude, that, there's, a, there's another Contra? Like I grew up playing the original Contra on the NES. And so I was like, dude, there's a Contra 3. And I remember my older brother, he, he kind of guilt tripped me into like buying it. He was like, oh, you kind of, you never get games for me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I was thinking about buying it anyway. So it was just kind of like, 
I don't know. I never even got past the first level. I never even got past the first level. I don't even think me and my brother ever played it together. Uh, but <laughs> never even got past the first level. Looking back, it was probably kind of a waste of a purchase, but uh, I was just really curious. I was really curious to see what this Contra 3 was, and yeah, I guess I got to experience the first level at the very least. Okay, and this is where I kind of start drawing a blank. Um, I, there's two specific games I kind of remember. I don't know if I had them on Virtual Console or not, but one of them is Mario Tennis. I, I think I I don't I don't know if I got this one. I vaguely remember seeing kind of like the icon or the title screen on the Wii channel thing. I don't know. I really don't know if I had that one. And then for some reason, Donkey Kong 3 just keeps driving in my head for some reason. So I don't know if I had those two, but I, I know I had more. I know I had more. And I'm actually so mad that I didn't. I didn't really know. I don't think I knew how to save them on my SD card or transfer them or whatever. And so, unfortunately, that piece of history in my life is forever gone. I'll never know what else I had in my virtual console library. But, yeah, I had a pretty decent chunk of games. The Wii Shop channel, uh, specifically, really just opened my eyes and really just, like I keep saying, opened this giant gate of a world I had no idea that like existed. The retro world was pretty limited to what I had. I mean, I, I didn't know there was a sequel to Contra. I didn't know there was Golden Axe. I didn't know there was Mario RPG. Like there was just so many different things that I didn't know about. And yet, it was just so fun finding these treasures. They they were really just hidden gems to me. I mean, for most, they weren't. I mean, I know there was a lot of people that used these services for nostalgic reasons, and I did too. But as a kid, not knowing about all these different consoles and games, like these were literally hidden treasures to me. And I'm guessing not just me, but a lot of people. And I think that's why the Wii Shop was so special to so many people. And the eShop, I can't leave the eShop out because that thing experienced, I experienced so much on that shop as well. Virtual console as a whole won't be forgotten to me. It just, it was a special service. It was something that really just opened my eyes to the retro gaming world. And it's, I feel like it's shaped me in how I look at retro gaming and how I, just my love for it. I don't know. It just really impacted me in such a big way. And I can't thank Nintendo enough for it. I don't even know. I, I don't know what to say. It's just, it was amazing. <laughs> it was sad to see the Wii Shop go. Um, and re even more recently, the eShop closing. Uh, and unfortunately, the Wii Shop closed on January 20, uh, January 30th, 2019. Uh, I had to look it up. I don't know the specifics of that. Uh, but it was really sad to see that go. And it was really sad to just kind of see a service that uh, brought so many different memories and experiences to me just kind of fall off the face of the planet. But I will say this. Uh, the Wii Shop channel's legacy will not be forgotten. Especially coming from me and uh, I know there are a ton of people out there that I'm sure had a similar experience with me playing games they may have never seen before and just uncovering so many different hidden gems that they may have never got to experience if the Wii Shop channel never existed and so uh, I think in my opinion it shaped a generation of retro gamers <laughs> I, I, that's what I believe uh, I could be wrong, and I'm sure it didn't shape a whole generation, but it shaped more than one person. And I'm, I'm sure of that. And so, if you have any experiences of either the eShop or the Wii Shop, I would love to hear all about them. I'm all about them in the comments. Please tell me any story you have or any experience you had with the service and how it meant to you. I would love to hear all that down below. Retro games has always been around in my life. It's never really left. And so, uh, in conclusion, Virtual Console as a whole just 
emphasized that love for retro gaming, but nothing will beat the Weed Shop channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to uh, my nostalgic memories of this service. Thank you so much for allowing me to just let loose, bust this bad boy open, and just talk about my nostalgic memories of the Wii Shop channel and Virtual Console as a whole. So thanks again, and I uh, will talk to you later. Peace out.